Hi, this is Bill Rao from Swiss Gold Global. I'm here in Iceland. Uh, it's been a really remarkable trip so far. I've got the pleasure of sitting here with uh, the CTO, representative of Genesis Mining, Stefan Schindler. It's great to be here, Stefan. Hello, thank you. So, um, thank you for taking, giving us a tour around your, uh, around your mining farms here. I mean, it's really mind-blowing what you have here. Thousands upon thousands of machines. The noise is like a jet aircraft. But maybe tell me a bit about yourself. How did you get engaged in, into Bitcoin and altcoin mining? Well, um, it was in the beginning of 2013, and uh, that was the first time I heard about it. Um, I was actually uh, up for purchasing a VPN contract for uh, internet, and um, you know I got one Bitcoin at the price of about 15 bucks. And um, to be honest, at that point, I, I still thought it was kind of useless, but um, interesting. And then only a couple of months later, I was um, taking a break. Uh, I was working in surgery before. I'm a medical doctor and I was working in orthopedic surgery. Uh, my contract had ended. I wanted to take a two months break and then apply for another job. And it uh, got the uh, you know, opportunity to look around a little bit. And I looked up a bit Bitcoin once more. I was really interested. And once I saw what this is and, and how it works, I got really goosebumps all over my body. It was uh, amazing and I, I, I can say I, I sort of saw the light. I, I didn't want to do anything but, you know, investigate more into Bitcoin and, and have a look into it. So uh, I got home immediately and I started to develop, my, to develop my first Bitcoin miners and spent about half a year just doing nothing. but. Um, investigating into Bitcoin and, and see what it is and that's sort of how I got into this industry. I never stopped doing it. In the beginning it was an idea or just a couple of uh, months uh, journey for me but um, the journey went on and I'm pretty happy about it. It's uh, fantastic. That's quite a transition from uh, being a, a professional medical doctor than transitioning into uh, to cryptocurrency. It's a, it's a huge uh, paradigm shift uh, in one sense. So. You obviously see a, you see have a great vision and future uh, in this industry. Yes, um, I was always very interested in technology, and to be honest, that's not very typical for medical doctors. Um, but it was always sort of my hobby. I was also, you can say, a little bit in the front line when the internet uh, got bootstrapped uh, in Germany. I was a system operator of a BBS, and we were sort of the first people who were offering a gateway to actually send an email out because at that time it was completely new. So that was always a little bit my background and I was always interested in it. Yeah. So, so tell me, uh, why Iceland? Um, we came here looking for a country that has good infrastructure, that has a cold and stable climate and fast internet and um, a lot of energy, of course. And finding all these things in one place isn't really, really easy. But um, looking at the map, we've, we soon found that Iceland is the perfect country for us. And um, in addition to the fact that they have really a lot of energy, green energy, it's geothermal power. They basically, it's a volcanic island. They basically need to just dig a hole in the ground and have access to really, really hot water. So there's your energy. And, uh, but in addition to all that, we found that the community here is amazing and, and really, really open to all this new developments um, and we can say that uh, I think we're really really happy to be here in Iceland. And is, it, is the farm in Iceland, is it, are you mining for the old coins or primarily Bitcoin here or a mixture, uh, Stefan? So here in Iceland um, the farm that we are at right now, this is an altcoin mining farm. Uh, all the rigs that we have, they can possibly, they, they can mine Bitcoin, it's possible, but um, this is a, a different type of hardware and the hardware that's deployed in the Bitcoin world is specialized ASIC chips. It means that those uh, machines can do Bitcoin mining really efficient, but nothing than that. And our devices, they can do Bitcoin mining, but they can do also so much more. They can do Bitcoin mining, which we don't because it's not efficient enough, but we can mine the entire altcoin market with those machines. So uh, are you saying that the focus on Genesis mining is now more on uh, altcoin than Bitcoin or that's, it, or that's not the case? Well, we started as an altcoin miner. 
Our first mining farm in Bosnia was a GPU farm. GPU means graphics cards and those cards are reprogrammable. And uh, we did Alcon mining in the beginning. And then um, we entered the Bitcoin market as well and now we're doing both. And I think there's a reason to do both. It's um, um, both is important to do. And um, we have our mining farms that are doing Bitcoin mining. But everybody knows at this point the altcoin market is so prosper and there's so much development going on. So we are ramping up our facilities big time at this point. Yeah, just having a bit of a look around your facility here. I mean, I mean, there's millions of dollars of capital involved here. Yeah, it's uh, probably one of the very largest facilities for altcoin mining in the world. And it's constantly growing. And the reason I want to touch on that, because I've been in business since 1986 and um, you know, people who are not involved in the mining side may think about mining, but to see the significance, the infrastructure involved, the operational costs, I mean, working around here, I've seen probably 20, 20 people here uh, working you know, constantly uh, on your different uh, uh, mining farms here. So there's huge overheads associated with, uh, with mining and uh, infrastructure capital uh, as, as well. So, mm -hmm. And the reason I want to speak about this is that uh, you're the real deal. I mean, there's historically in, in, in mining, there's people who make claims that they're mining, but this has not always been the case. I think you, you mentioned earlier on in our discussion that there's been cases where people say they've been mining, but they, they hadn't been mining at all. Is that still happening a lot in the, in the, in the market, market space? Well, it's a new technology and it attracts a lot of various types of people. And, uh, yeah. We noticed very early at you know the beginning of 2014 uh, when there was a huge traction going on in the market that there were different types of people entering the market. Uh, some people are after the money and some people just uh, you know are in interested in the, in the technology. We are always very transparent about showing our equipment, showing the facilities, inviting guests over. Um, large-scale customers, they can come over and visit us. Uh, we take them for helicopter rides and uh, basically show the equipment, show that it's real and that it's there. And of course we have some little secrets as well. We have gimmicks, we have little tricks that make our mining efficient. But we, we show the equipment that we have and that's been always a really important part of our company. Just on the on the, uh, on the capacity of Genesis Mining, I can't. I know we can't get into numbers, and I totally respect that. But in the world market, I think altcoin. You could be the biggest uh, the biggest uh, Ethereum and altcoin mining company. Yeah, we in are. The world. Yes, okay. we are at this point. Yeah. And, and in Bitcoin, you're certainly one of the largest, correct? Yes. And certainly one of the the first market movers, initiators of Bitcoin mining too. Yes. Well. To be fair, um, in Bitcoin, uh, the Chinese are currently quite dominating the market and there's a lot of people who don't like this because um, there's the production and the manufacturing of the chips as well. But we entered the market as well. We're offering the contracts to our customers. For the altcoin market, um, we're definitely the biggest at this point and we are ramping up big time. Stefan, it's obvious uh, being here in Iceland at your mining farm that you're really ramping up to another level when it comes to your altcoin expansion. So why is altcoin, why do you see it, the altcoin space so promising? Yeah, um, the altcoin space is the thing that's happening right now. It's uh, amazing what's happening there and there's a legit uh, explanation for that. And the thing is that Bitcoin was the market leader and is still the market leader and uh, it hasn't even reached critical masses yet at this point. People, when you talk about cryptocurrencies, if they know what it is, most people will still connect Bitcoin to being the cryptocurrency. It's the same thing as if you would say uh, email is internet, right? And that at the beginning of the internet, a lot of people actually thought that. So, um, but there's more. There's not only email. There came web surfing and Skype and chat and whatnot, so many things. And the same thing or the same kind of development is happening now based on the blockchain technology. So we have this Bitcoin, which is cryptocurrency, making it possible to transfer money from A to B. But at the same time, at the altcoin market, there's a huge amount of development going on at this point. And they're implementing new features. The altcoin market is 
an experimental field, there's about 400 different altcoins there. Not all of them will succeed. But it's, an, it's a natural thing, you know. Somebody who is talented, who is a programmer, can try out new things, can implement features like anonymity and things like that. And if it works well, then people will adopt to it and it will grow big. What's happening here is, is, is almost a change of, of the entire market. And um, also, probably you know a couple of people who kind of regret not having invested into Bitcoin in 2010, in 2011. Because if you had, that, if you had done that, yeah, of course, I mean, I, I told you I, I invested one Bitcoin or two, 15 bucks into one Bitcoin and I thought it was uh, useless money. But that's a natural thing at the point. And then you see some people who had bought a thousand Bitcoin in 2010 or 2011 and they became really rich and you think, damn, why wasn't I on the boat? But the same thing is happening right now with the altcoin market. There's coins like the Ethereum, for example, like Ether that has been worth 20, 30, 40 cents two years ago. It's amazing what's happening there. So I think uh, the best moment to get in uh, into the cryptocurrency market had been two or three years ago or four years ago. And the second best moment is right now. And uh, we all get that chance and we are all really excited about it. Yeah, and do you have a favorite? Um, I have a couple of favorites, yes. Uh, it's the usual suspects. I'm, I'm a big fan of Dash, actually. That one um, has been invented in 2014 and it introduces a couple of features like anonymity and a governance model, which I think is really interesting. And some other um, altcoins are implementing that also. Governance model means that it brings a consensus voting system that makes the developers and the users of the coin vote on what changes to implement on the coin and how to do it. Because that's something that the Bitcoin um, is kind of uh, stagnating at at the moment. Um, Bitcoin, we know it has, to, it has to grow with the demand. It has to you know, make the amount of transactions um, that are possible larger and everything. But the developers cannot agree on how to do it because there's no infrastructure that provides of how to agree on that. And so there's altcoins, not only Dash, there's also Decred and other ones that bring this kind of feature, which is fascinating. And of course, other altcoins are implementing fascinating ideas that are way beyond just having a cryptocurrency that's good for payment. Like, for example, storage solutions, like a distributed Dropbox that you can use, uh, uh, a voting system and, and many, many other things. So let's touch on the contracts then, because that's really, really interesting and fascinating, uh, this particular area of altcoins versus Bitcoin. I mean, in the altcoin space, your contracts are different. They're a fixed term contract with maintenance fees factored in, which is fantastic. On the Bitcoin, it's different, of course, they're open-ended contracts, and while they're profitable, you'll continue to get paid. And the biggest factor, of course, is, is primarily the, the difficulty rate. Maybe you'd like to touch on that because we quite often get some questions in. Well, today, the Bitcoin price is at $1,400 mm -hmm. uh, as an example. And my uh, daily payout in Bitcoin today was, was reduced compared to when it was at $1,200 or $1,000. Are you able to touch on maybe why that happens uh, for our members, um, Stefan? Yes. Uh, the cryptocurrency idea is that it's self-balancing. Satoshi Nakamoto, who invented it, mm -hmm had the idea that um, there should be a system that is limited like gold where you cannot just create more by inventing more like probably the central banks are doing just create more money to in order or in a way that you just write the number on a bill and and declare it to be existing that doesn't work for bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and the way it works is that the amount of coins that you can create per day is limited to a fixed amount and it can't be changed by putting more effort into the system. So if we are creating these coins by mining them, by uh, putting computer power into it, um, we cannot double the amount of coins that are being created by doubling our hash power. It doesn't work that way. You have to um, see the system as of being a, a cake and everybody gets a piece of that cake depending on the share that they that they contribute to the system. So if more people are entering the market, um, then um, the, the, the amount of calculating power that goes into it rises. And now the system 
um, is designed so that it measures itself all the time. And if more people are going into that market, it makes the calculation process automatically more complicated, so to even it out. In return, that means if you have a bad price for electricity or if, you, or if your um, equipment is inefficient um, and more people are entering the market and putting calculation power into it, then it becomes more and more difficult for you to gain rewards from it. It's called the difficulty. It's the difficulty of the calculation. And so in a short sentence, as the demand of a coin grows and the price grows, more people are entering it with their equipment and mining on it. It makes it difficult and it means that the people who have uh, a bad electricity price or an inefficient gear are the ones are going to be dropped out first. So it's balancing out. Once people drop out, then less computing power is in the market the equation becomes less difficult and the difficulty goes down. It's, it's self-balancing. It's, it's truly ingenious. And if I look at Genesis Mining from, a, from an outsider's perspective, while well, we actually contracted or we, we uh, did a, a mutual agreement uh, with your company, uh, with Genesis Mining Company, to actually you be, to be our mining provider, I mean, just your sheer scale, because you are on a global scale, your purchasing power, not just of technology, but also the consumption when you're negotiating for electricity, etc., uh, must be so much ahead of, uh, of many other players out there, which means it's going to benefit our members. They're going to be able to, you know, reduced maintenance fees means more payout on a daily basis, correct? Yes. Um, I think what we're doing is uh, just very, very efficient. Um, everybody could buy a Bitcoin miner and try to run it at home, but you would soon see that you know you have to wait for the machine to arrive. That's an opportunity cost loss that you already have. You are waiting for the machine and you hope it doesn't get stuck in customs. You have to connect it and hope that it works. It will heat up your, your home. Your wife is going to be angry because, because it's loud. Um, it's, it's basically a hassle to do it and it's, it's very complicated. Uh, we are doing it on a large scale and we are able to negotiate with the energy providers, with the manufacturers of the devices and it makes it very, very efficient. Um, also, I think we are really professionals in terms of our software that, are, that we are using and our entire system. It's all optimized for efficiency based on our experience that we bring in since many, many years. And just to finish up here before we go into the actual one of the mining farms you have here, one of the many five or six that you have here, um, on the global scale, where is Iceland sort of positioned? I mean, I know that you probably are diversified across the planet, is that so? Yes. Uh, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, obviously, so um, we are running uh, our mining farms globally on all continents and um, sort of every, every location is um, has their advantages and uh, the, the sort of equipment that you put in each location depends on the location. Some locations are really, really cheap in their energy prices, but then um, it's, it's a very usual thing that there's a lot of energy where it's really, really tough to live it. So uh, this is something that's all over the world. So the places that the energy is most cheap is probably the one with the least good infrastructure. Iceland combines a little bit of everything the prices are really good and the energy is plentiful, so that's why we are here. And we put our most valuable equipment here. Uh, there's other locations where we put you know, other types of equipment and it's a little bit spread out all over the world. I suppose skilled personnel is also a big issue because, you, I mean, it's, it's quite a labour-intensive process uh, by looking what I've seen uh, so far. But anyway, Stefan, I want to thank you for your time, the invitation to be able to join you here at this Iceland facility, and uh, we really look forward to uh, many years of head working together with uh, Genesis Mining. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.